Hey Hickok45 here. I couldn't find a semi-automatic pistol today. All I could find was this pathetic old slow revolver. <laughs> but they'll do in a pinch, won't they? Yeah, this is an old slow, pathetic, old school, old guy revolver. You got it. I'm gonna put some more bullets. No, I'm not, not yet. Uh, but I love them. And I know some of you do too. So we thought we would uh, feature the Model 13. We've had this for a long time. It's gone back and forth between uh, John and myself. And uh, it is a 13-2 Smith & Wesson, 13-2, 357 Magnum. And we just really like it. And I'm sorry we've not uh, done a video with it yet. I might have made an appearance somewhere. We kind of lose track. We do so many videos. But it, uh, it's not been featured and it is deserving it is a gun that goes back to the, if you look at the 13-2 uh, gun, or you know, any of the Dash 2 Smiths, that takes you back into the 70s and early 80s. Uh, same vintage basically as my Model 29. You've seen the long barreled one uh, a few times. And it's pin barreled as you notice. It, uh, that's one of the characteristics of the, the Dash 2 you know, Smiths. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, some of the newer shooters, if you look at the serial number or the model numbers, it'll it'll have like there's model. I don't know if it comes through very well or not with the lighting, but it's a 13-2 mod 13-2, and the dash uh, is uh, how you kind of talk about Smith and Wesson revolvers. For example, this model uh, 19 is a dash five, and it's got 19-5 in there, same place. That means it's a little bit later. Okay, so. And you can you can uh, Google it. Maybe I'll do a video on that sometime. But I have a little chart on my wall in the reloading room that indicates the changes at each dash. You know, dash two, dash three, dash four, dash five, and what they did. And and after the dash twos, I believe they quit uh, pinning the barrel and recessing, countersinking the uh, cylinders. So that was one of the significant changes. People who are Smith and Wesson. Uh, vintage snobs like myself and some others we really like these old pin barreled uh, smiths i don't know they don't the barrel doesn't have to be pinned this model 19 is not pinned it's just a little bit newer this one uh it goes back into the you know probably the mid 80s or something uh still a blue gun but after they quit pinning the barrel and recessing the cylinders you see the difference there see that you got that little bit of uh counter sinking there so that the the case head, uh, the rim fits down into the, let me put rounds in there just to show you. This didn't really start out to be a uh, basics uh, video, but, you know, education is important, isn't it? You see the difference here. See, the rim stops there, okay? So back in the day, they countersunk them a little bit, and so it was all flush, okay? So after the Dash 2s, I believe they quit doing that. It was mostly just a matter of it was just more expensive, not needed to necessarily. You know, the old Colts, I don't think, ever did that, so it's not like it was something that had to be done, uh, just like pinning the barrel. All right, so that's that's the difference. So, so 13 2, uh, Model 13 in general, it is this gun. Uh, you don't have adjustable sights with the Model 13. Okay, that's, that's what makes a 13 a 13. You don't have the shrouded ejector rod. Okay, those are two of the biggest differences. You know, when you close that up, you know, there's what you have. You know, when you close this up, or if you don't close it up, you know, you've got a, a shroud, a cover to protect the, the ejector rod. Uh, ejector rod housing, I think it's cal or called a shroud. You see it's totally protected from that side. So that way, you know, these were very popular police guns. So if someone got had to get bopped over the head with that. It didn't uh, maybe mess up the, uh, the mechanism. <laughs> I'm not sure what all the reasons are, but it does protect it. And, uh, you know, that's kind of your classic looking Smith in the Model 19 where you've got the ejector rod, you know, closes up into that. All right, and then you've got your adjustable sights, red ramp front sight on some of the Smiths. Well, you give that up with the Model 13. It's more of a basics gun. Same gun, same frame, uh, every, uh, it is the same gun, except for the sights and the ejector rod covered. Now this one, uh, the 13s, I think most of them had the bull barrel. So it also has a heavier barrel. Now you know these are unloaded, so I'm going to, how do I leave the cylinder out? You see the difference in the barrel. Uh, the 13s, many or all, have the heavier barrel. You see there's more meat to it. And that's the same 
caliber, 357 Magnum, a 38 caliber, but uh, you've got a heavier barrel, just like my model uh, 65 Smith that you've seen, and I'll show you in a second maybe, because I think it's somewhere handy. But uh, that's the difference. Uh, let me pull it out. Very nice little gun. You see, you got the heavy barrel on that as well. Okay, and uh, that is basically the same gun, except in stainless. You see, you don't really have any difference. You don't have the uh, ejector rod uh, protected, just like with the 13. And you do not have adjustable sights, K frame, you know, essentially no difference, except this gun is a little bit newer because it's stainless and it does not have the pin barrel either. All right. So it might be closer to age, you know, the Model 19. Okay, but all three of these in, are, are K-frames, and I uh, mainly had these out here to show you that uh, that's the difference. It's basically a Model 19, the classic 19, without the adjustable sights. That's the biggest difference, okay? And then also it's very similar to this. Now these are also, uh, this was uh, the gun that the FBI issued for a, a number of years, I guess in the uh, 70s and, and 80s, early to, to mid-80s. It was an issue gun, the Model 13. That was the FBI gun. Mostly in the three inch barrel in this configuration, okay? So blue gun, three inch bull barrel, 357 Magnum, just pretty much like this, but more, more like that one. Uh, is uh, the old FBI gun. And they actually uh, issued this one, I believe, uh, too, in the later years, before they went to the uh, Smith and, I think it was a Smith and Wesson uh, semi-automatic first, and then they've gone to several since then. Okay, so, but Model 13 is the main uh, thrust here. Uh, and kind of wanted to uh, make sure you have an appreciation for a good old revolver that does not have adjustable sights. Uh, you know, kind of a plain Jane Smith in a lot of ways, other than the wide hammer and wide trigger. Now, they, they would put those on some Smiths. Someone might have put this on there after they bought it, but then again, it might have come with it, you know. So, you know, it has the same wide hammer spur and trigger that my uh, Model 29 uh, 2 has, that big one. So, uh, they feel good. You know, I don't know. I, I probably would rather have, if I were carrying this gun, if I were FBI guy or... Uh, state trooper or whatever probably have the regular hammer and trigger not sure not sure why they put that on this particular gun But it's, it's fine. I kind of like it in a way So we have no adjustable sights. Let's see if we can hit anything with it. I guess that means it's worthless You know bad enough. It's a plain old revolver and then you don't even have adjustable sights It gets even more pathetic doesn't it? I just can't imagine who would even want a revolver You know they're just not almost not even a gun, right? Well, it might not be. It's pretty chilly out here, and I'm. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's go double action on that little drink right there. Mm, wow. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> How about that big drink up there? Double action. Missed him. Missed him again. <laughs> and you miss him that time. All right, did he fire five or did he fire six? He fired six. Okay, so this gun has a nice trigger. It has a gunner's about to rip himself off the porch up there. <laughs> we got where we tie him up when we're doing a video. <laughs> he has a tendency to want to retrieve bullets. I think it's a retriever in him. Uh, not to mention the problems that apparently are there with his brain. I'm not sure. So it holds six. You know, old school revolver. It goes back uh, quite a few years. Somewhere around 1979, 77, 80, you know, 81. I don't know. No, no. Yeah, it'd be probably, uh, well, somewhere in the 70s probably. Okay. I'll get it dated sometime. Uh, oh, I see a little drink sitting on a cinder block. Let's see if I can pick him off. It went high. Try that other 12 ounce drink, that'll tell me. Yeah, got to hold on the bottom. <laughs> I think I'm empty. Let's see. He fired five or he fired six? Oh, he fired five. Yeah, he fired six. <laughs> oh boy, what a trigger. One thing you get with Smith and Wessons, generally speaking, is a nice trigger. 
There's no doubt about it. Now I've got some speed loaders, but I'm not being attacked. Just to have them here in case. Yeah. This is really old school. Get on the speed. Let's go across the hill. Let's go over that little red uh, rifle gong over there. <laughs> I'll take it. Let's try it, Mr. Piggy. Hi. Ow. You. <laughs> okay, here I am again. Did he fire five or did he fire six? You click and he flinched. He fired six. I'll tell you what. You know, revolvers are just fun. And many of you have discovered that. You really have. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about that lately, about how interesting it is that so many young people and new shooters are enjoying revolvers. And uh, it's, a, it's easy to see why. Okay. Because they just shoot well. As I say that, I start missing, right? Well. There we go. More like it. I'll try that ram. He doesn't usually want to fall. I don't know why he doesn't want to fall when, they're, uh, when you miss. I think you could scare him down. But they're just so simple uh, in design. And uh, they tend to work. Now they can have problems, as I pointed out before. If you have a problem with a revolver, usually you have a serious problem, and it can be very slow to get back into action. But generally speaking, the first six, second six, you, you don't have problems. Uh, they just tend to work, you know. And uh, this is an example of a gun that, you know, I don't know what you have to pay for it. An old Model 13 like this, if you saw it in a gun shop, particularly used, you know, it might be $300, depending on how worn it is and what kind of condition it's in. But so many people message me and say, hey, I can't afford a five or $600 gun, and I want to get a good gun, quality gun, or the best gun I can find. And it's one reason I uh, sometimes recommend that, well, you can find a cheap gun, but, you know, you can get a, a Smith & Wesson, which is a quality piece. You know, a used one like this, an old police trade-in, that maybe hasn't been shot all that much and, and uh, a really quality firearm for not all that much money. Let's go gong hunting. We got six in here. Feels good, really does. This is also a good example of a gun, even though it doesn't have adjustable sights, it has a really good sight picture. And uh, the way it's carved out there, maybe you can even get a look at it, uh, see if we can get it in focus well enough for you. Uh, I don't know what it's aimed at, but maybe you can kind of see the, uh, the groove and everything, if, and it's on. Now, I tend to, with these bullets, have to hold uh, on the bottom of the target doesn't matter the windage is on and so I prefer sights like this unless they were off <laughs> now if the sights are off uh, you're you're in a world of hurt there's not a lot you can do there not much way to adjust them right but uh, but there's nothing like having fixed sights that are on and they generally are they're generally on with all of the uh, the many uh, old Smith & Wessons I've owned over the years uh, that have had adjustable sights. I bet you on most of them I've never even moved the sights. Or if I did, just a minor tweak and that's it. Next 20 years I don't even touch the sights. So so that's one of the advantages of this. It's kind of like a Glock. You buy a Glock, most of them don't have adjustable sights. 
they just tend to shoot on you know where they're pointed so you end up with a lower profile see you don't have as much there to scratch you get in the way whereas you've got this sticking up see you got that extra piece a higher sight and everything so not a big deal but it's kind of nice when uh, if you really like a low profile pipe firearm uh, and that's one of the reasons that, uh, that I'm so fond of a Austrian masterpiece because it's uh, everything about it's low profile it's like you carved it out of a piece of soap and uh, didn't put anything else on it okay let's see what we got here I see a couple of cans here at close range <laughs> Dog is. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> All right. Nice. Nice double action, too. Uh, now, these are Magnum rounds. They're probably a moderate Magnum. I load them 165 grains. And we'll put something else in here in a little bit. See what we can do. I'm going to go back over there. One thing about a revolver, uh, you don't lose your brass. You know, you can just, you don't ever lose it like with an automatic. Excuse me. Okay. Not bad for an old school piece of iron. Uh, put it on target, shoot it, it'll hit, you know. These are the kinds of guns that are easy to reload for. There's a lot of ammo for them. And if you're not sure what kind of gun you want, you want something to take to the range, something for self-defense. It used to be that uh, 357 Magnum was the recommended gun. You know, something like this maybe. You can take it out, have fun with it all day long. It could be a, a home defense firearm. It could be a carry firearm. You know, it's just, you can shoot 38 Specials in it. You can shoot some really light 38 specials in it, some warmer 38 specials, or some really hot, you know, 357 magnums in it. Just a really versatile gun uh, that anybody can enjoy. I never did hit that ram, did I? See if, see if he's in the mood to fall today. We'll put 165 grains of lead on him and see what he thinks. If I hit him high, he might go over. Not that high. Probably not going to go. All right. What do we got? Oh, there's a soft drink down here. Let's pop him. <laughs> ah, there's another one. I didn't see him. Ah, a little bit high, I think. A little bit high. Click. Okay. He was empty. Okay, so with, let's try a different round just to show you the difference. Uh, to show me the difference. Now these are going to be hotter, these factory 357s. These are PMC and they are 158 grain. That's your classic 357 load. Now these will probably shoot a little bit lower point of aim. See, and there'll be a lot more blast, is my guess. I'll try that same soft ring and I'll see if there's a difference in the hold. See if I can miss it in a different way. Okay, I think a little bit lower point of aim. Let me try that red plate and I'll be able to tell. Yeah, I think it went lower. Yep. Let's try that ram while I've got these hotter ones in there. Yeah, took him down. Took him down. Try the gong. All right. <laughs> Mr. Cowboy has not received his share today. <laughs> okay. Now that's the other thing. If you've watched the cowboy movies, if you're not getting the kind of velocity you want, kind of add a couple feet per second to it there. All right, so 
that's just another example. You can shoot hotter loads. You can shoot moderate magnums. You can, uh, that's what I have here. Here's some 38 specials, uh, some hollow points, 158 grain lead. That's kind of the FBI load uh, that they carried for a long time. And you got a variety of speed loaders that you can use you know, with these guns. Just a wonderful, fun, fun gun. Look, I'll shoot a couple more here. I just uh, thoroughly enjoy this. Since it's dirty, this has a square butt. You know, some of the newer guns like that would have a round, round butt frame, as they call it. And uh, gets all dirty. You do know with a revolver like this, you don't want your hand out here. You would never hold it like that to shoot it. Well, you could. You'd probably do it one time, though, okay? Because there's an incredible blast that comes right out through there, the cylinder gap where it meets the forcing cone there. Uh, just a lot of pressure. As long as your hand's right there, it's not a problem, but you wouldn't want it out here. Maybe we'll get 10 Outdoors 9 to demonstrate that sometime for you. Let's, uh, well, shoot that plate there. Sweet, sweet. I love it. Yeah, you know, I've got a pig over there that has not been knocked down, don't I? Yeah, we can't have that. Can't have that. Oops. That's a light trigger. I didn't mean to let that one go quite yet. Good excuse for missing though. Let's put some more of these hot ones in. Let's try these uh, S and Bs. We haven't shot any of those. We have a uh, cinder block here that has not been shot enough. Still has some life left in him from some other videos. I believe these are even hotter. Not sure. And we'll just put some on the old cinder block there just for fun. Yeah. Okay. I think we were chewing on him with a 22 there in that one, I'm not sure. That is a 357 Magnum. Uh, again, that's the versatility of a gun like this. You get lots of power or not so much. It's up to you. But the Model 13 is one of the classics. Uh, you can see why the FBI was attracted to it. It's a, it's a nice, it's a strong enough revolver. It's a K-frame. Uh, you can load up a pretty powerful round in this thing if you want to. Uh, or you can practice a lot with some reasonably powered rounds. It's just a good all-around gun. There's nothing like a Smith & Wesson K-frame. It's, it's like the perfect size, and those sights are right on. I, I, I think I can shoot this gun better than the Model 19, actually, and you don't even have adjustable sights as far as, you know, even precision shooting with it. So you don't really lose much there at all, if anything. Just a really sweetie, if you ever see one of these for sale in a gun shop or a Model 65, just like it, uh, which is just a stainless version. You know, you've got a really good gun there. Uh, nothing wrong with them at all. I don't care what the price is. So, uh, anyway, Model 13, Smith & Wesson. It's one of the classic revolvers. Has a lot of history and just a fun all-around gun. And I'm glad I could bring it to you today. And I'm going to be shooting this gun a lot in the future because I just really enjoy it. Life's good.